guys hope everybody is doing well um so i actually started shooting this video and decided that since i was doing a review i wanted to shoot it a little bit closer than i usually do for my lip and chat so i set my camera up again and i'm going to refilm my video um so i do have a little bit of work done from my previous attempt at filming this but that's okay because it kind of gives us a starting point so um i am working on my hua can the one that i was doing my I want to do a full review on this product from start to finish for you guys so that and see what the quality of these pictures are like so there's been some issues with the quality of the Hue can product and I just kind of wanted to um, you know just like discuss that talk about what I'm seeing and and you know so anyway this picture was ordered um, in November in September this year it is February so this is hopefully a newer Hue account. I hope it hasn't been sitting on their shelf or anything, but if it was, that's their issue, right? So anyway, um, I just started, um, I'm in, working kind of in the middle area of the picture. I find for me, this is the way to avoid popping drills. Um, so yeah, we're just getting started on this little jack-o-lantern picture. Um, so far, so good. I've been quite happy. Um, yeah, so I guess kind of what I'm looking for is to see how the drills lay down, the quality of the drills, um, the overall quality of the canvas as I'm working on it, and just the kind of overall, like my overall satisfaction with the with the product. So, um, yeah, so I'm interested to see if anybody else has done any Hewitt cans this year and what your experience has been. Um, I know there's been some problems in the past. But, you know, I really am a firm believer that you got to give people a second chance, right? So, like, if enough people were saying that they were having issues with the Hewitt Can product, that hopefully Hewitt Can listened and made the changes that they needed and improved their product. So, I know a couple years ago when I started diamond painting, um, the kind of the gold standards were Hewitt Can um, and ever moment was kind of everybody said order from these two companies and then for a long time there um people were saying no don't order from you Hewitt can so i hadn't ordered from Hewitt can in that time um just because i i was only just starting to diamond paint so um yeah i hadn't had the opportunity i'm just gonna straighten my camera out here a little bit I'm gonna change my angle here, maybe make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. Um, I hadn't really had the opportunity to order from them, so and then everyone said, "Don't, don't order from them." So, anyway, so my go-to company has kind of become Home Fun, and you know, yeah, I don't want to compare the two. I'm not gonna go down that route. So, anyway, um. So I'm interested to see how everybody else's experiences have been with Home Fun in 20 or with you account in 2020. If it's been any better, any worse. So anyway, um, let's see what's new around here. Um, what can we talk about? I never know what to talk about with you guys, but I can't just sit here quiet. So um let me see. It has been a complete stinking deep freeze here still. So like our, our temperatures before wind chill have been fluctuating around um, minus 28 to minus 34, which is like stupid cold, like just stupid cold. But we usually here in Saskatchewan get a good cold snap like this. Um, I'd say like once a year um, and it usually stays below zero for a few like multiple days or you know below minus 25 for multiple days and then the temperature will come back up so today we are on day oh day seven I think and I think the warmest it's been with the wind chill was minus 41 uh, the coldest it was was one night it did briefly get down to minus 52 um but didn't stay there long. I think like minus 47, minus 48 has been kind of the coldest it's been, which is, you can't even, you can't even fathom that, right? Like that's cold. Um, my light pad turned off and I can't read that symbol without my light pad. There we go. Um, 
So, oh, that's that little anchor. Where did it go? Anyway, so the buses don't run if the temperature is, oh goodness, there it is. Uh, school buses don't run for the kids if the temperature is below minus 45 with the wind chill. Um, last year, I think we only had two or three days where the buses didn't run. The buses haven't run three days this week. So my son only went to school Wednesday and Friday, like today and, and Wednesday. So he was a little bummed about that because he's kind of, you know, wanting to go to school to be with his buddies. And, um, but, uh, yeah, so the buses were running today because it was a balmy minus 44 at six o'clock this morning. So, so he was happy to go to school, but kind of bummed because, you know, it's Friday and, I think he kind of secretly wanted a little bit of a long weekend, but he didn't get it. Um, he also had a math test today that I don't think he's ready for. But, you know, you live and learn, right? Mom can't protect you from everything. So anyway, he's off to school today. Um, the weather is supposed to start turning here. Tomorrow is like minus 25, which is the warmest it's been. Um, and then hopefully... From there, it'll start warming up a little bit. So we're hoping by next week to be like minus three, minus four. Um, we're kind of like end of February is kind of the time where you start thinking spring. But spring in Saskatchewan can be very unpredictable. Um, last year, March 10th, we had no snow on the ground. Um, one year, I was outside shoveling snow in May. So... Uh, a lot of it depends on when spring finally decides to hatch. And a lot of it will also depend on how much snow we got over the winter because it kind of keeps things colder when there's all the snow on the ground. So um, being a prairie province, the farmers do like that snow to stick around a little bit so that they get a better crop. Um, I guess I don't really understand that, but I know the more snow we get and the longer it sticks around, the better their crop is going to be. So I think the farmers are happy this year. We've gotten quite a bit of snow, so that was good. Um, but I am so tired of the cold, you guys. Like, you know, when you combine this whole pandemic and the isolation and the stay away from people and stuff, and then you combine that with these extreme cold temperatures where you can't even like go outside and shovel your own driveway without your skin pinching, it's kind of isolating. And it is, it's really hard on a person's, you know, your mood and stuff. Like when you just, you know, thankfully I leave the house to go to work, but you know, you basically like, I can't even imagine people that are working from home. You'd basically just be sitting inside unless you had to go somewhere because you know, you can't, can't, there's nowhere to go and you know outdoor activities aren't possible when it's this cold out so um yeah anyway hopefully it breaks and hopefully we have an early spring this year and that gets better so anyway um so yeah my story for this week so um I work evenings it's just me and my son so we have a nanny that comes in and my son's 13, but, you know, like, he's still, he needs someone to come in and help him make supper and get ready for bed and that kind of thing. So he usually stays at home alone for a couple hours, and then around supper time, our nanny comes over, helps him make supper, and make sure he gets his chores done and stuff and is in bed at a decent time. And then I come home about 11.30. And anyway, um, so Tuesday I was getting ready for work, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to work today. Um, my stomach was off. I was in and out of the washroom, you know, that kind of thing. And so I texted my babysitter and I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to work today. Not feeling too hot. So I don't need you tonight. And she's like, well, that's good. Cause I was actually just going to message you. And she's like, I've been sick all night. I think I've got the stomach flu. And I'm like, okay, something's going through the house. So anyway, I was like, it's just a 24 hour stomach bug. So we'll be okay. Anyway, I called work, I booked off, and the nurse took my book off and was like, okay, you know, that's fine, and see you when you come back on Friday, because I had Wednesday and Thursday off. Then I get a call from the supervisor saying, um, you have GI symptoms, which are, you know, unclassic symptoms of COVID. I'm drinking coffee as I'm talking. Um, 
So I can't let you come back until you have been, you've phoned the screening number. I'm just looking at this symbol here. I have twos. And then there's one here, I'm not sure. It looks like a question mark. But I don't, oh yeah, here it is. I was like, I don't remember getting up a question mark. Um, so I'm like, okay, so I called the 811 number and I was thinking that they were just gonna tell me, you know, wait 48 hours and if your symptoms get better, you can go back. And they're like, no, yeah, you work in a high risk environment because I work in a long-term care home, which in Canada has been extremely high risk. Um, so they're like, no, before you go back to work, you need to go get tested. I'm like, okay. So anyway, they phoned me the next day and I'm like, but my symptoms have completely resolved. I feel okay. Um, like I felt kind of post flu -y, but I'm like, do I still have to come in for a test? And they're like, yeah, you do. So I phoned work and they're like, okay, well, we'll book you off. Let us know when you can come back. So anyways, I was supposed to work tonight, but I'm feeling fine, but I'm supposed to be self-isolating until my test come back, comes back. So I am not working tonight. Um, so yeah, like the testing process was super simple. Um, I was really actually quite amazed at how simple the testing process was. Um, so I was a little worried because I don't drive. So I was like, okay, how is this gonna work? So when she called me for my appointment, I told her like, how do I get down to the testing center? I don't have a driver's license. And she's like, oh, that's no problem. We'll send a taxi for you. I was like, okay, how much is that gonna cost me? And she says, well, no, it's paid for under your healthcare insurance. And I was like, okay, I was totally expecting to have to pay for it. So anyway, they sent this taxi. Uh, it was like a big bus and I was the only one on it. Um, he took me down to the testing center and waited for me and brought me home. So yeah, the test was super, super simple. I just called and I let them know I was there. They had me wait in the vehicle and called me when they were ready for me to come in. Our testing center is a testing and assessment center. So on one side of the building is where you go to get tested and then the other side of the building is where you go if you're having trouble recovering from COVID, you can go and see a, like a, a specialized infectious diseases doctor. And I know that because I had a few friends that had to go to the assessment center. So anyway, so I went in, they're like, you know, confirmed who I was. They gave me a mask and had me sanitize my hands and then they walked me through to this other room where there was like eight cube, oh, Roomba's dead. Um, there was like eight cubicles. Um, I was the only one there at the time. So I sat down, they took my information, did my test and had me leave through another door. So it was like, I think I was in the building for a total of three minutes, but it was frustrating for me because like, I know I don't have COVID. I know I don't, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I had, I had a stomach flu and so did my sitter, but I get that I had to go. Like totally understand that and I was willing to go. But I got to thinking like, I could get COVID here, <laughs> you know? As I was being super careful not to touch anything. And, but yeah, you guys, like I feel so blessed in a way to live here in Canada where we have that luxury of having public health care. I cannot imagine living somewhere where you're relying on private health care and co-pays and, and that for your medical needs. Like here, I don't think people realize how lucky we are in Canada. Like that I was able to go for a COVID test and have that taxi covered under the provincial health care plan. You know, like you need to go see a doctor, you just go. Like you just get up and go. And you're not happy with that doctor, you book with another doctor and you get up and you go. Where in other places, like, you wouldn't have that luxury. Some people, you know, the cost of seeing a doctor and getting an antibiotic is, you know, like it's, it's it could affect your, your month, like your financial plan for the month or even the year. It's like, you know, I think about taking my dog to the vet and being like, okay, my dog has an ear infection and, you know, how am I going to pay for this? And I cannot imagine having to make those decisions for myself or my child. So I feel completely blessed to live where we do, where we have that luxury of public health care. Um, yeah, 
I don't even know. I'm, my dad is down in Arizona right now, and, you know, their choice. Don't want to get into that one. But <laughs> um, he, you know, they were exposed to COVID in their retirement community. Um, they were out for supper with a couple, and then that couple called them and said, yeah, we have COVID. And they, you know, my dad couldn't go get tested because about five days later, you know, they had self-isolated and then they came down with symptoms. So dad called the testing center in their county and it was located at a community center. And they're like, yeah, we can't take you because we have no way accepting your insurance copay. So they were not able to get tested, even though there was a testing center there. They had insurance for testing, but due to logistics, they couldn't get tested. So the only way technically they could have gotten tested is if they needed hospital care and then their insurance would have paid for the test as like a hospital laboratory thing. So they didn't get tested. So they assumed they had it. Um, they self-isolated. They stayed home for the 14 days and until they were feeling better. Um, and they, like, they did everything. They, but they, they don't have confirmation that, yes, they had COVID, right? Which for them would be nice because then at least they know they have a little, a little bit of immunity while they're down there. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it is what it is. And they're a little bit concerned about coming back to Canada with the new restrictions, but um, my dad just said, who knows what'll change between now and April when we're planning to come back. We're just taking it as it comes and that's it. So anyway, um, yeah. So I have a fr another friend who's down in Arizona right now and they have just kind of decided to stay put because they're happy down there and they're able to stay for another four months. And they're just gonna hang out and and just do their thing down there until they decide to come back so as for me I'm stuck in the deep freeze so <laughs> I was thinking about traveling you guys like I don't know where is the first place that you guys want to travel um, I love to travel I absolutely love it um, I, I didn't travel for a long time and I kind of got a taste for it and my son and I quite enjoy it. Um, we were going to go to Florida back in June, and that kind of got postponed. So I took the money that I had saved for my trip, and I paid for a new fence and some tree trimming in the backyard. So uh, we had a really nice backyard this year. But anyway, I guess I'm going to have to start saving my money again for, for another holiday. Um... I really would love to go to Hawaii like that's I've been dreaming about a cruise to Hawaii you know going and leaving from Vancouver and cruising to Hawaii and seeing all the the islands and then spending a little bit of time there before I come back but obviously that's not gonna happen for a little while so um yeah it is what it is right you just go with it but that's where I want to go I think that's gonna be my like maiden voyage when I can travel again as a trip to Hawaii. So we'll see. I'm, where do you guys want to go? What's your dream vacation? Are you looking for something like fun and family oriented? Or is it like a, you know, a hot getaway or a relaxing getaway? I think when we can travel again, I think the travel industry is just going to be booming. Everybody's going to be so busy. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, so my plan for the summer, I'm hoping to take some time off work, um, and then what I really want to do this summer, you guys, is I know we're going to be kind of stuck around the house, I don't think that any travel bans are going to be lifted this year, so what we're kind of hoping to do is take some time and go camping, um, my son really likes that, and I think it'll be a nice relaxing time for us. For me, I'll take some time off work, enjoy the outside, not have to worry about too much cooking and cleaning and all of that jazz. And yeah, so that's kind of my plan for the summer. And then I also want to like get some work done in my backyard. Um, we've been kind of putting that off. I did some work on the side of the house and... But I put in a new deck a couple years ago, and 
I really want to screen it in so that we have kind of a sunroom back there. I think it'll be a nice place to sit and, you know, relax and, and that kind of thing. So anyway, so here we go. So I've got a little more of this done. You can see there is absolutely no popping drills. I'm just going to take my camera out of the holder here so I can get up nice and close for you guys. So let's see. There we go. It's really looking really, ah, just dropped my camera. Looking really nice. Um, I saw a couple drills there that I hadn't placed properly. But yeah, like overall, guys, look at that. It looks really good. Um, it's funny when you look at things through the camera, you see all the faults, but no popping drills so far. Um, I got a nice little area done here. So far, I'm really happy. The drills are sticking nicely. They all seem to be a few uniform size. I have found a few drills that are thicker than some of the other ones, which I've just kind of discarded, but I don't have any trash in the drills. I'll show you my, the drills here, if we can get up nice and close to those so you can take a good peek. Is my camera going to focus on that? There you go. So the backs of the drills don't have any divots in them. Those are really nice. And if you look at the actual drills themselves, let's get nice and close here. You can see there is no, um, there's no trash in them. So that's nice. So yeah, guys, overall, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, I will work on it a little further and then give you another review and then probably do a post review for you. So we'll keep on top of this if you can. And like I said, I'm going to work you through the whole process of doing it and hopefully give them a fair review. So anyway, guys.